What's going on YouTube? Today we are going to talk about Sigma language and in the previous video I explained briefly about Sigma language and you can just get back to the last video because I don't want to repeat things over and over and over and over again so today today's video will be about Sigma and you can watch like a brief introduction about Sigma in the previous video and the reason for using Sigma as well so now I'm going de uh, in detail over Sigma. So first let's cover the definition of Sigma language. So basically Sigma is an open source. The only thing to the first thing to know is that it is open source language. Is it a programming language? It's not a programming language. It is just we call it open source and signature language. So also it is signature language. So to sum this up, it's open source signature language. So um, what is the use case of Sigma language? So yeah, we know that it's open source sig uh, signature language, but what are the use cases of Sigma language? Now the first thing or the first use case is to transform IOCs, or we call them the indicators of compromise into um, unified let me call it unified alerts or queries now what are these alerts what are these queries again guys if you want to know let's get back to the last video <laughs> but here all of these terms are being explained in the context of security operation center and or um, detection tactical detection or detection engineering so here we are talking about detecting threats so when we detect threats we raise alerts we write queries into seam solutions so during the investigation or during threat hunting you may come across indicators of compromise and you want to use these indicators of compromise say across different seam solutions it could be QRadar it could be elastic stack it could be Splunk so you found these indicators of compromise and you want to just use them across all of the solutions it's going to be time consuming to develop queries for every single one of these products so here Sigma comes to the rescue it allows us to actually put these IOCs in a unified signature format so it can be used all across all of these products to create alerts or to create queries that can be used directly on these same solutions to be able to uh, find uh, find what's going on or maybe find further indicators of compromise so that's the first use case the other use case is easy sharing easy sharing So we can actually share these indicators of compromise in an easy format with other security analysts and other community members. Okay, these are the two most common use cases of um, uh, Sigma language. Now there is another thing to know about the Sigma language is that the it is actually written in a language called YAML. Ain't a markup language. That's the main language where, uh, at, uh, by which Sigma is written. So basically all of the Sigma rules files have the extension .yml. So files have, I don't know if it's right, have .y.ml extension. All the, when you write a Sigma rule, you just write uh, the, the extension of the file will be .yml. Now that's the first thing to know about writing Sigma rules. The other thing to know about writing Sigma rules is that spaces are used for indentations. So don't use tabs when you write Sigma rules. Use spaces, as you can see here, space, space, space. And make sure that the spaces are systematic and organized. So example, here is one space for under the lock source for the product and category. And for the, as you can see, for the field name, if you put one space for the selection, you put two spaces for the field name and then three spaces for the key value and so on and so forth. That's what we mean by using spaces, organized spaces. Now, if you want to write comments to actually explain the purpose of every syntax element, you can use the pound character. So use pound character to write comments. 
now if you want to use key value pairs uh, such as here we can we can actually use key and then the the notion will be will be actually um, colon character so key value now the last thing to know is that six ironically I'm writing six at the very first <laughs> when it actually it's the last one so our six is actually the use the, oh, the use of the hyphen character so if you have for example a value here you put you prefix the value or precede the value with dash or hyphen so these are the golden rules or the common rules in or when writing sigma language now let's take an example so these are called the syntax element so let's now let's go about syntax go over the syntax element so a title id status description all of these are syntax element for example let's talk about the title now the title is actually the name of the rule you can give it the rule give the rule a name and you write it, the name in the title id is actually globally unique identifier to distinguish between rules status status describes the stage of the rule so there are many statuses we, from which we can select for example we can say the rule is stable if the rule has the status stable it means that the rule is in production and is being used by other analysts if the rule has the status for example test it means our tests are being done to the rule and could require um, tweaking and fine-tuning there is also experimental so experimental it means that the actual rule is working okay but it might be noisy and it might generate some false results okay now description to provide more context about the rule and the objective or the intended purpose now I call this the first batch of the syntax elements title ID status and description then we have the lock source okay so the lock source here describes the log data where it comes from and what is the operating system for example the product could be Windows or could be Linux or could be any name of any name of any other product from which you are taking the logs Windows Linux Mac if you are taking the logs from the firewall you can type the firewall name the category here now the category selects the logs log files written by the selected product for example windows we have many log files right mainly they are under the win event log but you, you don't go and write win event log here you just describe the, uh, the, 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 the tag or the item that you are actually uh, monitoring from the, from the log file for example it could be here uh, process created so that's the category what I mean by the category now after the log source as you can see we have another rule syntax which is the detection now detection describes the parameters of the malicious activity we need an alert for so here we put all of the attributes of the malware now it starts with detection after detection we have the search identifiers and we have the condition the search identifiers is actually started with the word selection so when we type selection it means we have started the search identifier after the search identifier it comes the field name the field name here is the, the field name that we take from the logs so if the logs are taken from an event log or from sysmon log we have to be familiar with the field names for example the field name according to sysmon for example it can be command line this is the field name and I put the field name here and below that I put the key value pairs or the values to match so for example I'm gonna show you an example but just first understand the syntax so here we have the detection the selection and the field name so basically what happens here is that the selection or the search identifier identifies the attributes of the malware and matches these attributes could be key values or could be values to the field name if a match occurs then we apply the condition now the condition here is selection 
which means we match the selection here. Now the matches, the search identifier matches the values. Suppose we have more than one key value here, two or three. We use and and we use or. I'm going to tell you when and where to use and and when we use or. Now that's the general syntax of Sigma language. Let's take an example, a rule example, and go over the syntax and the various fields. All right, that's an example, as you can see, Sigma rule. Now, the title, as you can see, it's WMI event subscription. So it monitors for Windows Management Instrumentation event subscription. And this is the unique ID. This is the status test. The status it means that the rule is not yet ready for production and it's being tested for effectiveness. Description says it all and the author date modified. These are the uh, the first batch of the rule syntax elements. Now, as you can see, we have tags here and we didn't talk about tags. Tags actually add information that may be used to categorize the rule. So tags may include values, for example, such as the, uh, this is called the TTP, Tactic Technique Procedure, taken from the MITRE, AGT, and CK. And it could be CVE number. So here we describe, we just add some context and information that may be used to categorize the rule, the sigma rules. If you have multiple sigma rules, you need to categorize them. So we use the tags here. So to be able to effectively search for the rules, maybe we can search for the rules. If you organize the rules in some repository, you, you may be able to search for the rules using the tags. So you put, for example, T1000 or T1546 indicates the uh, corresponding tactic used by the attacker. You're able to come up with this rule after you search with the tactic or the, or the tag. Sorry. Okay, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to just make this long on the tags. Now, here we have the log source. This is the the second, I'm going to go out, of course, second patch of the rule syntax elements, the log source. And we said, guys, that the log source is where we describe the log data to be used for the detection. What's the, uh, what is the log data here? It comes from Windows as a product, and the category is WMI underscore event. And then we start the detection syntax elements. So it first starts with the detection, always, okay? And then we have the selection, which denotes the search identifiers that will be used. And then we said that after the selection, we have the field name uh, to which we were going to match some values. The event ID is the field is a field name that comes in Windows event logs. So I know beforehand that I'm actually writing this rule to match Windows event logs. So I use this field, as you can see, uh, as a search identifier or to search to match values with. So just as you can see, the event ID 19, 20, 21. So what's going to happen here? So basically, when you see, as you can see, the values are preceded with hyphens. Okay. Now we call this lists. So search identifiers may come in lists or may come in maps. We're going to give an example of the maps. But lists here, this is the list of values. Now, how the, how the search identifier, mainly the selection, will match the event ID for these values? It's going to be AND or OR. It's going to be OR. So the rule will be triggered if the event ID equals to 19 or 20 or 21. If it equals, it's going to trigger the uh, whatever it is the rule, whatever it is the search query. And the condition is selection. Ah, okay. After that, we have false positives. Describes the list of known false positives positive outputs based on log data that may occur. Example, exclude legitimate vetted use of WMI event subscription in your network. And lastly, the level. The level describes the severity of the activity. Okay. The activity, of course, that should be taken when the rule is triggered or under this rule, if it is not triggered. Okay. Now we have, as you can see, medium. They actually start with informational, low, medium, high, critical according to the severity of the activity, not of the malware. The activity that should be taken under the written rule. Now that's an example rule, guys. And don't forget that this is a list. We're going to take an example on maps. Now let's take another example of sigma rules. Okay. So as with the title, netcat partial version, 
Description says adversaries may use a non-application layer protocol for communicating for communication between host and C2 server or among infected hosts within a network. That's the purpose of this um, uh, rule. References, author, date, modified tags. I explained a lot about the tags. Let's look about the log source now. As you can see, this log, the source of the logs is Windows. And the category is, as you can see, PS Classic underscore start. Here we put definition fields to have to be extracted from event and then we saw the detection as you can see we use the host application field okay and also the host application we use contains so what is contains contains is a modifier a modifier that facilitates the search for the values okay now for example as you can see we have contains it means the host application either contains powercat or powercat.ps1 so if the host application contains either of these values, okay, it, of course, it doesn't mean that it contains, it actually matches the full value of the host application. And if at least, if at least one of these, PowerCat or PowerCat.ps1 is mentioned within the value host application, the actually the rule will be triggered. So as you can see, condition is selection, false positives, and level is medium. All right, now let's talk about the maps. Gonna skip directly to the search identifier. So we said that search identifiers, as you can see, starts with selection, of course, after detection, and then we put the field names. All right, the field name here is image, but we have another field name, command line. When we have more than this, more than one, it means we have a map, a map of search identifiers or fields uh, to which values will be matched so basically when map when we have more than one it means we have a map and maps work with an and so this is how the condition will work it's gonna search first if the image not if sorry image the image field if it ends with one of these values one of these values rm or shred or unlink and command line contains one of these okay so we have and between th this one and this one if for example command line the command line field doesn't contain var log or var spool mail in the value of the command the rule will not trigger an alert or if it's converted to a query it's not going to return any events in your sim solution the condition here is and okay okay so after we have gone over all of this let's now take a practical example of uh, from try hack me so the practical example is here practical scenario and I haven't done this before I'm going to do this live with you guys so we have here a scenario your organization let's first start the machine it is started okay it is so your organization Aura has recently been experiencing unusual activities on some of the machines on the network. Amongst these activities, the IT manager noted that an unknown entity created some scheduled tasks on one of the machines and that a ransomware activity was also recorded. So, some unknown file or entity created scheduled tasks and that a ransomware activity was all also recorded. The SOC manager has approached you to find ways of identifying these activities. Okay, I'm not going to waste time reading this. We have to create two sigma rules. The first sigma rule will identify scheduled tasks. And the other sigma rules will identify ransomware. Okay, of course, depending on the guidelines here. So as you can see here, for the scheduled task, understand that it is process creation. Let me start the attack box. And the rule detection variables should contain image and command line arguments. I hate this when it comes when it pops up to the right, and you have to just roll your eyes to be able to pick up on your left. So the first rule, guys, sigma rule, will use as you can see process creation event. So pretty much that's the category 
okay, under the log source. The rules detection variables, if you remember, under detection here, should contain image and command line. So it's pretty much si similar to this one, image and command line. So it might be a map. And then you may choose to exclude system accounts from the query. Okay. Now for the ransomware activity, you will look for a created file ending with the text. So this is a file event. And again, we're going to use image here. Image and target file name. Oh, why? Because the, the file creation process would be run via CMD. So this is also image because it represents the executable by which the process will be started the image will be cmd and of course to be able to use the extension we need to we need a field called target file name you can find all of these fields guys to know just to find to know where i'm getting these from from the sysmon uh, fields when you extract the logs change it if that's the that's for that's uh, the last one after we convert the sigma rule into um after you convert the sigma rule into a usable syntax or a usable query on kibana we're going to answer this or go over this so we're going to wait for mr attack box to launch so going to start the browser first navigate to kibana and yeah let's wait so let's log into kibana Okay, let's make sure we are on the right interface. So we go to, as you can see, this is the index, win log beat. Index. Okay, so we're going to leave this as is now. And before doing that, we're going to say, to be able to return events, say, put years ago here, and put, for example, the last 10 years. So we have around 100,011,475 events. Okay. After having this ready, let's go and write the rules. All right, so going to tools, I'm going to use, um, see what is that, root, rooms, sigma. I'm going to use this file as a guidance. Let's see if this is comfortable. Pluma, no, not comfortable. Let's use sublime. Sublime is way better. Okay, so we're going to start the first rule. The first rule will alert us for the process creation, uh, for the scheduled task. Title of the rule, so I name it here, alert for, let's say for, it's actually much of a description. Scheduled task rule. I'm going to leave the ID as is, but as you can see, we can generate one using universal unique identifier, generate from hey HTTPS. Okay, let's, let's generate one. Bulk version 1 generation, bulk version 4 generation. Using a timestamp of the MAC address of the computer. Okay, version 4. Let's take that. Okay, that's the ID. Now, since 
since we are actually testing the rule we're going to use test as a value okay the description here let's say detect instances of scheduled tasks I'm not going to write the author data modified since this is done under a city of challenge now let's go with the log source the category it's pretty much windows and the source of the log data it is process creation why it's process creation you think as you can see for schedule a task understand that it is a process creation when you schedule a task you are starting a process what's the process we will learn in a bit now we come to the search identifiers so detection here detection and here the search identifiers what do we have here what are the parameters that we have so the rules detection variable should contain image and command line so what is the image what is the command line again they are the fields so here the field name one will be image okay what's the image here the image is the executable file name the executable file name here guys will be the executable used to run the scheduled tasks in windows it is scheduled or scheduled tasks so it's written like that that's the image the other field name is the command line so what's going to happen here let's use um you remove this one and go down exactly one space and here what are we going to do guys so this is actually a map the map will say that if the image of the created process equals to schedule task and if the command line uh, field equals to what so if we start the schedule task from the command line what will be the value what will be the actually the strings involved in the command that we will write it will be actually what will involve the name of the what executable or it will involve the word create because when you use the binary schedule task in the command line you need the word or the keyword create to actually indicate what the task that you want to create right that you are indicating that you are indicating that you are creating a task so we need the word create so here we use hyphen okay and here we use schedule task this string will be mentioned in the command line and then the other one is create okay so what's happening so far so basically the, the condition will start if the image equal to schedule task and if the command line contains either one of these either one of these so we will need the contains modifier now so pipe to separate the field name from the modifier name and we type contains but wait a bit we will need another keyword which is all let's take this like that cancel the spaces because sigma is very sensitive when it comes to spaces so what's happening so far the search identifiers will look for the field image if it equals the scheduled task and if the field command line contains either one of these what's going to happen it's going to trigger the rule so we're going to leave this as is selection all right and the fields false positives you may choose the execute system accounts from the query so let's type here exclude system accounts low uh, level medium okay let's see these ideas now what's the next step the next step is to convert this into an elastic query use encoder and we're going to copy that sigma that's the as you can see corresponding elastic query now we can use this to search for the indicators of compromise or to search for what you, you think for the events so we go back 
uh, we, we hit this here don't forget that we need to modify on this command the first thing that we will do guys is to cancel the asterisk this one because these asterisks are not understandable by um, what was it Kibana enter so we have one event returned let's drill down on this event um, wait let's see here so there was this button okay let's see here the process md5 the event category the host name windows server 2019 and that's the command line as you can see it was written into that host as you can see the command line contains the word create and the word schedule tasks and if we haven't matched or put these attributes in the rule in the rule file we won't be able to detect it right okay let's see the questions now to detect the creation of the schedule task what detection value would be appropriate for the sigma rule it is the schedule task what was the name of this task created let's see from the command line it can be clear answer format is only the name of the okay so create schedule task once tn spawn it is the spawn that's the name of the scheduled task what time is this task meant to run what time okay we need the time so it is meant to run from the command line st oh 2010 all can be brought from the command line okay now let's go to the ransomware activity minimize this and we're going to go back the file and modify on this now let's switch this into a ransomware detection rule of course not a general ransomware detection rule here we're talking about a ransomware detection to the uh, that is appropriate to the context we have so ransomware um let's see the give it the appropriate name you may choose for the ransomware activity we will look for a curated file ending with the text the file creation process would be run via cmd okay so here we're gonna say testing ransomware let's generate a unique id close although we are not using these ids right directly uh, but it's very it's good practice to go over the uh, creation process of the sigma rule step by step and in a detailed manner the status is test description here we're going to say detect ransomware um, yeah detect ransomware I'm not going, there, there is no much context about this uh, scenario to actually translate it into description so the category now the category here will be windows and the process creation it's not going to process creation why because as you can see here the attributes are a file or we're looking for a file ending with dot text yeah i can see another thing the file creation process would be run via cmd so we're talking here about a file creation category so file creation here file creation process would be run via cmd so that would be the image field okay for the ransomware activity we'll look for the curated file ending with the text okay let's go through the detection or search identifiers first we have as you can see the file creation process equals to would be run via cmd so we're talking about an image because we have an executable right so what we're going to do we're going to replace this with cmd and you will look for a curated file ending with the text now we have to match files to match file we're going to change the field here the field will be target file name okay ending with the text the modifier will not be contains it will be ends with 
So we're going to write here ends with. How many? Remove the all. We have only one value here, which is the text. So we're going to remove this one. And we keep this as is. Or let's say this. Let's put this back and say here it is dot text. Okay, so the rule will be triggered or it will return events if the image field equal to CMD. Okay. And the target file name ends with the text if we have a process that is launched using cmd and it ends up or results in a file that ends with the text then according to the scenario in this room we have a ransomware let's take this and use this encoder that's the resultant query we take it and we go to kibana and search for the events don't forget remove the asterisk aha uh -huh, we have a problem here wait image target file name okay let's try with path Still no luck. Target file name. Process executable text and file dot path dot text. Yep, we have a result. Oops, what happened? Go back. We clicked on the timestamp. Okay, let's see. To detect ransomware activity, what log source category would be appropriate for the Sigma rule? It's file event, not file creation, because creation, deletion, modification, all comes under file event. What's the name of the created file? Let's see. This is the file. Are we required to provide the path? No, just the name of the file. So it's you, your files, all capital letters or up, up, uh, uppercase. What was the event code associated with the activity? Should be written somewhere here. Process ID, PID, event kind version event code it's 11 and lastly what were the contents of the created ransomware the contents of the created ransomware so we have this format Let's see. Message. Let's go up. Host name, architecture, provider. What is the content of the career ransomware? Nope, what happened? So it's pretty weird, we cannot find this here. But we have to look again. What were the contents of the career ransomware? So it might be hinting towards the contents of the file or the text file that was dropped by the ransomware so it is your files 
So you have to find the contents of this file maybe. Let's see. So let's take this, copy that, and search with this. The full path. Nothing. Double quotes. Okay, okay, fine. We have a problem in the syntax. I understand. I have to fix it. Searching. So we have three events with this, or events that match this or the path of the text file that was dropped by the ransomware. Let's see this one, this event, what it has. We're looking for kind of message or text content that would be that would contain the uh, message left by the ransomware in the file so here is nothing let's see the other one We have one more additional. Let's see this one. Host OS par process parent command line. Hopefully it will contain the solution because I started to lose my temper guys. Okay, process command line text. Yes. This is a pure locker ransom note. So that's the text we're looking for. Uh, no, wait. We have, there is a one letter in the answer. So it could be this, including the hyphen. One letter here, it is the hyphen, I, I think. And yes, so that was it guys. Before I leave the video, I just summarized all of the things I explained about Sigma rules in this note file. I will publish it under the channel membership tier 2 cybersecurity notes. And for members, it will be downloadable as an MD um, extension so you can add it to your Obsidian notes. Thank you for watching.